Are you tired of trying to clip reflectors to light stands or using tape to hold them in place? Have you bought the cheap reflector holders and found out that they're flimsy and difficult to work with? I have two solutions that you can build yourself out of PVC piping for less than 10 bucks for both. Stay tuned until the very end and I'll show you a cool and inexpensive way to create a broad light modifier for your speed light or mono light for only a dollar. Hey gang, before I get into the details for these two reflector holders, just a quick programming note. This coming Monday and every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time in the United States, I will be live here on YouTube with an hour-long program called Tog Chat. I'll be sharing tips and tricks in real time and doing photo critiques of images posted in my Facebook group taken by photographers from all over the world. I hope to see you during the live show, but if you can't make it, don't worry. It will be recorded and you can watch it whenever you have the time. Okay, back to the reflector holders. I've been getting lots of requests for more DIY studio gear as a follow-up to the PVC background stand that I showed you in this video. So I want to show you a real easy way to create a set of reflector holders that are even easier to use than the expensive ones. Let's begin with my parts list. I purchased two 10 foot by one half inch PVC pipes at my local Home Depot. A little tip, if you're like me, I can't get a 10 foot pipe in my car. Home Depot will cut it for you. I just asked them to cut the pipes into two five foot sections. I also purchased six T's, eight elbows, two one half inch female adapters, two quarter inch by 20 by a half inch thumbnail screws. If you have a quarter 20 screw with a knob laying around from some old camera gear, these are a lot easier to turn. Or you can buy them for about three bucks on Amazon, but that does increase the cost of your build. You'll also need some PVC cement, which I had left over from the background stand, so I haven't added that to the overall cost of these because the cement goes a really long way. A rubber mallet comes in real handy, as does a hacksaw or a table saw, or better yet, a PVC pipe cutter. You'll also need a small drill. I built my holders to hold a Walmart reflector that measures 30 inches long. Be sure to check the measurements of your brand of reflector before you cut your PVC. I found that some of the dollar store foam boards are a little shorter. I recommend assembling the unit without cement first to be sure that you've measured correctly and then reassemble it and glue it. Here's the build diagram for the reflector holder. I have two main pieces cut at 16 and a quarter inches long, five pieces at one and three quarter inches, four elbows, three T's, one female adapter, and one thumb screw. I took two of the T's and ran them through a table saw to create a groove just thick enough to hold the foam board. If you don't own a table saw, ask a neighbor or be really nice to the employees at Home Depot and you may get them to do it for you. Be sure to assemble the unit on a flat surface. If it's twisted, the grooves for the foam board don't line up. After your cement has dried, drill a hole slightly smaller than the quarter 20 thread in the female adapter and then twist the thumb screw or knob all the way in. The first time you do it, it's gonna require some extra effort because you're creating the threads in the PVC as you turn it. I used a pair of pliers to get leverage. Hey, if you're enjoying the video, please take a second and hit that like button and subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And when the video is over, if you really enjoyed it, please share it with your photography friends. I'm counting on your support to help grow this channel. Once the threads are in, a little Vaseline petroleum jelly makes it easier to loosen and retighten the thumb screw when using the holder. And there you have an easy to use, very lightweight reflector holder that costs you just over three bucks. If you wanna be able to angle the reflector or use it on a diagonal, a super clamp mounted on top of a light stand will give you an almost infinite number of possibilities for mounting the holder. If you don't already own a super clamp, trust me, you're gonna want several for your studio. I've included links in the description below. And of course, if you want to look cool, a little black spray paint will get you there. By the way, unlike most expensive reflector holders, this is so lightweight that you don't need to counterbalance the holder because everything stays centered over your light stand. Technically, it's a gobo and flag holder. Okay, I can hear it coming through YouTube. Some of you are asking, what is a gobo and how is this thing gonna hold a flag? I have a video coming up where I'm gonna show you some cool tips and tricks for gobos and flags. So for now, let me just explain that a gobo goes between your light source and your subjects, and it's used to alter or shape the light. A flag also goes between your light and your subject to block the light from reaching a part of the scene, 
or it's used between your light and your camera to prevent the light from reaching the camera lens and creating unwanted flare. Because we're going to want light to pass through the gobo, I didn't want the crossbar in the way, so I've moved it to the bottom as you can see in this diagram. For this build, I have two main pieces cut at 16 and a quarter inches long, three pieces at one and three quarter inches, two pieces at 10 inches, four elbows, three T's, one female adapter, and one thumb screw. The build process is the same as it was for the reflector holder, except don't glue these two T's to the unit. Rub a little Vaseline petroleum jelly on them, and now you have an adjustable flag holder. Of course, you can use this build for a reflector holder as well. It's just a little bigger. So if you want one piece of gear that does both, this is the one to build. Just like the reflector holder, if you add a super clamp to the mix, you can set this up in an almost infinite number of ways. I promised you an inexpensive way to create a broad light source for a one light portrait using a simple speed light or even a mono light. Hopefully you've watched some of my lighting tutorials and if you haven't, what are you waiting for? You know I'm a fan of broad, soft light sources. All those cool reflectors and soft boxes and octo boxes and umbrellas, that stuff can get pretty darn expensive. So if you don't have a big budget or you just want to keep it simple stupid, here is a soft one light portrait done with a LumaPro 180R speed light and a Walmart reflector. Now would you believe me if I told you that the flash is next to the model and facing towards the camera? Uh-huh, next to my subject, not in front of her. Here you can see that I have the flash placed on camera left and aiming directly into a Walmart reflector that serves as a 20 inch by 30 inch diffused light source to reflect the light back to my subject's face. And if you have a second speed light or a strobe, you could add a rim light on camera right set slightly behind the subject just to add a little depth to your image. As always, the possibilities are almost endless. Remember, a good photographer is a good problem solver. So now you have a project for this weekend. Make yourself some reflector holders and do some practice shots to find some cool and creative ways to use them to improve your portraits. Make sure you fill the frame and shoot heavy because your best shot, it's your next shot. So keep learning, Keep thinking and keep shooting. Adios. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Don't forget to tune in every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. That's UTC minus four for the live Todd Chat Show. See you then.